Hey folks, Evil DM here. I'm back for another episode of the Meg's DC Heroes Learn the System. Hopefully you've been enjoying the first couple of videos. First video, obviously, I did an unboxing showing you the things I had, some of the great things I've uh, purchased over the years. So that was a lot of fun. Second episode, we went a little further and how to do the how to import the old character creator into uh, your Windows 10 or Windows 7, depending on which one you have. So you can use that still because it was a great little generator system, but unfortunately it would not work in anything. I think seven, some people got it to work in seven, but a lot of people have Windows 10 now. So that's been rather an issue, but follow my video number two and you can also follow along and get it to work to a point that it works pretty cool. Um, otherwise you could just use the Excel sheet, which you can go to the Facebook group, uh, Meg's DC Heroes, and I'll put a link of that in the notes so you can go ahead and check those things out. Also, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a little project that I've been working on in uh, for DC Heroes as well. But anyway, the point of this video this week is going to talk about powers, skills, limita bonuses, and limitations. It's all lumped into one right now because it's really not a big thing to go through. Because you have to look as a player or a GM and see what you really want to build your character like. And the one thing that I really love about this system... It's because you have points, and you could do whatever the hell you want with your points. The GM says, okay, you have 450, you have 1,000, you have 300, whatever. You could do it and expend it however you want to make the character that you want to make. So going on to the next step, after we're done with our attributes, we want to go on. Now we're going to look at our powers. Now we have a couple choices here. We could just skip right to page 43, start looking through the powers, and build our character. Or... What we could do is we can go to page 43 and also link our powers to our stats or our attributes. Now, what that essentially does is makes it a little bit cheaper to buy a power. But you have to kind of decide what you want to do first. Do you want to just straight up buy it? Because when you go to page 43, which I can show you here. Let me just pull this up for you. Page 43. Do, 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 and I'll switch the screen for you. See? This is an example of a power right here. So, on page 43, powers. See? These are physical powers. So, when you are building your character, say you want this, we'll go claws, because you want to build a Wolverine type character, because, yeah, Wolverine, he's pretty cool. So let's just say you're like, all right, so each power is has an ability that it's kind of linked to, dexterity. It has a range, which is touched. It has a base cost. It has uh, a factor cost. Now, when you're purchasing this power for claws, for example, you would pay a base cost of 25 just to purchase the power at zero APs. That's it. Once you... Uh, purchase that power and I'm flipping here in the book to get to that chart for you so I could show you is that there's a factor cost involved which is one as you can see here one now when you're purchasing your power you'll go back to that AP purchase chart on page 30 which will come back to me so I could show you this chart right here again on page 30 which we looked at the last time and we will look on number one, which we see right here. And that's how we, we would say, okay, I want my power to be, I don't know, 10. And then we pay the 10 fee right there. Plus the base cost, which is 25. So we're paying 16 points plus the 25 for this power just to get it to uh, start off. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're saying, okay, that's not that bad. Now let's go to another power because that was a pretty cheap example there and it doesn't help to link that because why would you want to? Because you can't get it below a factor cost of one. Now what linking does is, here we go, perfect example, darkness. This power right here is linked to strength. It's got a base cost of five, so it costs five to grab that. And the factor cost is 7. Yeah, that's a little steep because if you look at that chart on page 30, you're, all, you're picking your powers under that number 7 again. 
and say you want anything decent, at 10, you're looking at 112 points right there. But if you link it to your strength stat, that drops that factor cost down by two. So now it's a factor cost of five as opposed to a factor cost of seven. All right. That's kind of cool you're saying to yourself. Uh, that works. That works in for the game for me. I mean, it makes it a little bit cheaper. You're looking at five on the chart as opposed to seven, and that's, uh, wow, that's a big difference there. Almost almost 23 points there. A little over 20-something points there. 30-something points, sorry. And uh, that saves a lot in the long run, but there is a drawback to linking your powers and the problem with the linking with the powers is that it can never be upgraded or advanced or le leveled up as some of my players would say without the strength going because it's linked to your strength now at this point for this darkness so if you want that to go up you have to also pay for the strength to go up as well as the darkness to go up because they're linked together now so that's the only downside about that is linking is that you can't raise one without the other. So you take the good, you take the bad, you take the both, and there you have the DC rules. No, I'm kidding. So that is how that works as far as, and when we look at skills, which we'll go over here now. So we're going to take a look at, so there's some more powers here that we can take a peek at while I'm going to the skill section here. which is on page 74. just had to find my bookmark. Now, they're done the same way, pretty much. But the, the only difference between skills and powers is some of the skills that have an asterisk next to them, like this one, artist, can't be attempted unless you're trained in that said skill and it'll tell you in the description exactly. So if you're not trained to be an artist sculptor, for example, or an artist writer or a photographer or something musician, you can't actually use that or attempt to use it based on this, based on the attribute alone. Cause you know, in, in most role-playing games, if you don't have the skill, you can attempt to do it somewhat using the attribute or stat that's kind of linked to it to get it, to work like you get a kind of a chance for it maybe not with this you can't even attempt it so that is that and we have some pretty decent skills in here based on your character animal handling charisma detective gadgetry and of course some of these things are a little bit outdated for like the modern day because this was made obviously in the late 80s early 90s so your GM is probably going to want to sit there and make up a few more things or modify some of these things. Like military science, you could probably upgrade to a couple of those things. Um, let's see here. There was another one. There was uh, Thief also would probably want to be upgraded to include things like... Um, see, security systems. Eh, that You might want to upgrade that to say something like, you know, computer use, uh, uh, you know... Computer use and hacking and things like that. You might want to add them into as, as a sub skill. Just some things you need to go over as a GM and just kind of update on your own. Otherwise, it won't work out too well for you. Now, there's one last thing we wanted to go over here. And that's the bonuses and limitations before we go into building our character here. And bonuses and limitations basically allow you to modify a power and reduce the cost of it or increase the cost of it depending on what you're doing. If you're limiting the power, you can decrease it by two, by the factor cost by two as well. And limiting the power would be like maybe you're taking a certain power that's a distant power now like electric blast or a lightning blast or something and you're making it touch only. Well, it now is dropped down by two as opposed to a distant power and if you go to page 41, which we can do now, you can see that... I went the wrong way. Sorry, folks. Bonus limitations. They have... The, the factor cost will tell, it'll tell you exactly what it is under the bonuses. Factor cost plus one or more, depending on the example. Range, 
back to Christmas one more. These are all the bonuses you can have. The one thing I really love about this game is the miscellaneous bonuses, or like there's miscellaneous sections, which we'll get more into on the uh, advantages and drawbacks, because they only give you a certain amount in that. And here they also do the same thing, they, and they just say, meh, here's a miscellaneous thing. If there's something we can't figure out, meh, make it up with your GM. And you and your GM will sit down and figure out what it is. Which I really like because then you can really make up a whole lot of bonuses and a whole lot of limitations for your character to see what type of character you want to build. So you know, here's limitations. Diminishing. The power is reduced by one. Losing one AP for every distance traveled. Uh, like Superman has diminishing uh, issues. He has... Um, where is that? Because of Kryptonite. Uh, they don't have it listed in here, but... There's power restrictions on things. Miscellaneous. It gives you the opportunity to write in whatever you want to help build the character you want, which is really makes this game very customizable, and which I find a lot of fun. So hopefully this brief rundown of how the skills and the powers and the limitations and the bonuses work, if you just flip and you read, you can definitely see it's really easy. You just have to follow the charts and follow exactly what they're doing. And you should be able to build your character so far up to this point without even any issues whatsoever. So hopefully you're enjoying the series. Give me a like and a comment and subscribe to the videos. If you haven't, hit, click that little bell notification if you haven't either. So you know when my new video comes out. And uh, we'll see you next time.